Hey guys, so today we'll be looking at a furniture and this furniture will be modeled using the technique of parametricism. So let's look at how to do that. The reason that we're using the parametric option is to make sure that the geometry or the cross sections of my geometry can actually be changed and modified according to which my furniture is also going to change. So for that you can see that I have brought up an example of this sort. Now we will be trying to model just a portion of it just to make sure that the understanding process is clear enough and at the same time we will then be looking at how the individual slats of my geometry wherein the furniture has individual pieces of wood that can actually be made inside Rhino. So for this modeling we'll be using a combination of Rhino as well as Grasshopper. So let's begin. So first and foremost I want you guys to notice that in the perspective viewport you can see a few cross sections that have been drawn at strategic points. All of these cross sections at the bottom have been drawn in such a way that they are cross sections of the entire furniture at key points. Now we will only be taking two of such cross sections to understand the entire modeling process. As you can see I have my grasshopper window open. Now the reason for that being I will be using the tool of sweeping for the modeling process. So now I have my cross section 1 and cross section 2 and then I also have a rail which I'll be using for the sweep. You can also notice that I have a point that is set out over here and a point that is also set out over here. Now the reason for setting up these two points is so that the entire plane of the cross sections can be oriented along my rail curves for the sweep. You could have also done the same using the cross sections that have been drawn over here. At the moment they have just been oriented to my rail curve just to reduce the amount of work necessary. Now the rail curve could be anything. For now I've just chosen a part of my furniture which is let's say from here up until the center of this geometry which is why you can also see the curvature, the slight curvature that's there for the furniture, which is the same that I've tried to emulate over here. Now for this modeling, we shall now input all of these values into Grasshopper. We will be using the technique of sweeping. So for sweeping, we'll be typing in sweep, getting the sweep one tool. Now sweep one would ask for rail and then the sections for the sweep. So let's set those out. I'm getting in a curve geometry as a parameter, but right clicking, setting one curve. My rail curve is the one that's over here. So I'm setting this in. And now I will be inputting that as my rail curve. Now I shall also get in more curve elements. I will also copy paste this with a control C control V and I will be getting in my cross section curves as well. Right click on in both of your input parameters and set the curves. I will now be taking this curve into sections. Now for getting the other section as well into my sections input parameter slot I will be holding down my shift button. You can see that the sweep has been successful for just these two cross sections. Similarly you can now see that it can be done for the rest of the curves as well. For simplicity's sake I will be using this geometry into Rhino and we'll be looking at creation of these individual wooden slats. Now the reason for creating the sweep inside Grasshopper is so that tomorrow if I were to change some of my cross sections, now let's go into my front viewport. 
So if I had to change my cross section, let's say to here, you can notice that my sweep will change accordingly. Let's do that again. You can see that my sweep is changing accordingly. This is just that extra bit of control that we require just so that we can change our geometries easily and with no hassle. I could do the same for the other cross section as well. I could even make this as a change for some of the other cross sections. Select this, bring it up and create something like that. I could even pull this down to create some geometrical sweep that way. Now once you're happy with the entire sweep itself, I will go ahead and bake my geometry. Now the whole point for baking is so that I can get that into Rhino, right? Now I will be changing this into a better layer so that it's better visible. All right. Now we shall also make sure that all of these geometries are hidden in the preview. Switching off preview for all of them. Now you can see that the geometry has now been transported into Rhino. Now all that we need to do is get these individual slats. So for these slats, we will be first and foremost, we will select this geometry and cap it. Now it says unable to cap the geometry because of the fact that our openings are non-planar. For this, I will go into my top perspective, draw lines that will act as my trimming edges. I will place both of these lines as close as possible to my geometry in order to not disturb it way too much. I'm going to trim them. Similarly, I'm going to make another trim on the other side. And this should be some geometry that we can cap. You can see now that the geometry has been capped. on either side. I'm going to move this geometry now all that we'll have to do is use the contour tool now contouring will help provide the cross sections for the wooden slats at equidistanced spaces now the way in which I will do that is I will select my geometry say enter now it will ask me for the direction for contouring. I will present this as my direction. Now the distance between my contours has been kept at 2. If we want to change that, let's redo this. I'm using the contour tool now to make the individual slats for my furniture. For this, I will also make sure that they are grouped objects and then I shall provide some distance. Let's say OK. You can see that the elements have now been created. Let's move these elements as well to the side. Now I can use these as the cross-section curves to make planar surfaces out of the planar curves. I will now go into surface creation then create surface from planar curves. You can see that the surfaces have been created. I shall move the curves back to the previous side. Now I will be able to easily select all my surfaces, change the layer for Firstly, visibility sake, you are now able to see that the furniture is almost complete. All that I have to do right now is to provide the thickness that it requires for each of the element. For that, I will be selecting all of my surfaces 
and then I will be offsetting my surfaces. So use offset surface. Now the distance for offset can be specified in plan. I will specify a very small distance of 0.3 and then I will also make sure that the both sides is off and I do want a solid and I do also want to delete my input and then I will say corner to be kept as sharp if I say enter it's calculating it and the final result will be presented to us this would be our final of my entire geometry for the furniture now you can also notice that it has some amount of texture on it which is nothing but the wooden texture to apply the same onto these elements over here I will go into the layer that they are placed in which is the default layer I will click on material now I shall go into custom material and then I will set the color texture I have a wooden seamless file already downloaded you can do the same for yourselves and I will open this then say ok similarly you could also have set the bump map for the same to give it that extra bit of texture I will say ok before saying ok I could also check for the reflectivity and the gloss I will keep the material a little glossy just to show that the material actually has some polish on itself then I will say ok now if I change over to the rendered viewport you will be able to see that the furniture is now ready if I did want a thickness of slightly higher degree than this I could have created that as well this is how simple it would be to create your furniture designs in, in Rhino so if you guys like that video please like share and subscribe we'll also be putting out similar YouTube content related to Rhino tutorials as well please look out for the same and hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial